What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to find the domain of a rational function. And I'm gonna do that by working through five different examples to help you understand the concept. Cheers. We see that we have a denominator, and I'll give you guys a hint. Whenever you guys see a radical, think of restriction number one. Whenever you guys see a denominator, think of restriction number two. Yes? So the infinity will always have parentheses. Infinity will always have parentheses, always. Um, so when you guys look at this one, we see we have a denominator, right? There's no radicals. Cool. But we have a denominator. So what do we know about the denominators? Or our restriction number two? Our denominator cannot equal 0. So what is our denominator in this case? Same thing, x plus 2. So all we're going to do is say x plus 2 cannot equal 0. Okay. X plus 2 cannot equal 0. Does any other number work? Does 5 work? Does negative 2 work? Yeah, they all work. Just not, just not whatever we got. Well, which value does it not going to work? We know it's negative 2. But to do that, all we'll do is say, just subtract negative 2. So x cannot equal negative 2. But every other number works, right? So let's go through, let's do, uh, let's do interval notation first. So. Here's the list of all numbers, um, infinity. Okay, so now let's go and think. Um, let's go and kind of look into where we're going to be. It's going to be all numbers except for negative two. So we can say negative infinity is less than negative two, which is less than infinity because t negative 2 is not included because those represent non-inclusion okay another way to look at this is this represents all real numbers correct right so since this represents all real numbers we know that 2 is not included so we need to represent this as negative infinity to 2 and 2 to infinity. So what we do is we kind of break it up. We say, well, from negative infinity all the way to 2. Oh, negative 2, thank you. So from negative 2 to 2, because remember that's not included, so negative 2 doesn't count, and then from negative 2 to infinity. And technically, a lot of times you guys will see this as a union connection. Um, but you could also write it with a non-union connection as well. Okay, and this is going to be the preferred, my preferred method of writing domain notation, just so you guys know. I like writing it here and writing it up, like in there too. I'm not going to use inequality sim I'm not going to use inequality notation um, too much, but we'll, uh, that will basically how you can convert it. Make sense? If they don't tell us about any restrictions we can now assume that the domain is going to be from negative infinity all the way to infinity, right? Just like over there. There's no restrictions. So we can assume that. However, we have to look at kind of our embedded restrictions. We know that if there's a variable in the denominator, that can't make the denominator equal to 0. And that's what I was trying to say in that. I don't really like how x is going to do it. So we can't make the denominator equal to 0. So I have a variable in here. I need to figure out what number, then, makes my denominator equal to 0. Well, the easiest way to do that is to take out the denominator and just set it equal to 0 so I can find the value of x that does that. So using our inverse operations from algebra, x equals 3 halves. So that means when x is equal to 3 halves, when x is equal to 3 halves, that makes my denominator 0. So guess what? 3 halves is not inside the domain. So we have our function. Our function goes all the way to infinity. It can do whatever stuff it wants to do. But at 3 halves, here's 1, here's 2. 3 halves is like right here. At 3 halves, there's either a whole or an asymptote. We don't know what it is right now. We're going to learn about how to determine your asymptotes and holes later. But for right now, you can just say, this function continue is continuous, except it doesn't, it doesn't include the value 3 halves. And then it continues from there. So it's all real numbers except 
for that value. Okay? Now I want to show you guys how to write that in um, interval form. Because it, um, we wrote all real numbers as negative infinity to infinity. But in reality, this is going from negative infinity to how far over does it go till it has to stop? To 3 halves. Then it start back, starts back up again from 3 halves to infinity. Do you guys kind of agree? And it doesn't include 3 halves. That's why it's a parenthesis. So to connect these, we use the union symbol. OK? Yes? Please don't do this. Don't say, oh, those divide out. No, 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 don't do that. Because like, does this make sense? 4 minus 4 minus 1, like that's just, you can't just like divide those out. That doesn't make any sense, OK? So don't just divide that out. Again, you guys, see, you guys see a fraction, and you say, oh, we talked about that. Rational functions are restricted when our denominator cannot equal 0, right? Now, we got to be careful because we could have like radicals in the numerator or something like that too, right? So let's look at our numerator. Does our numerator have any restrictions of that type of function? Is there any restrictions for x squared? No, because Mr. McCullough kept on saying we looked at x squared, right? That's a continuous function. That's good. So the only thing we need to worry about here is what are the numbers that make our denominator equal to 0? Those are not in our domain, right? So we set it equal to 0, and we solve. So this is kind of like the problem I actually already did. Factor out an x. Apply the zero product property. So x equals 0 and x equals 1. So that means my function is defined for all numbers except 0 and 1. Now for this one, I'm going to graph the number line because, question, what? I'm going to graph the number line just so I can like visually understand this one or see it. So it's undefined there, and it's undefined there. However, everything else, we're good. So again, if you want to write the domain and you have a like, function that's broken up from different discontinuities, just write the domain of like each interval. Okay? So the interval of this domain would be negative infinity to 0. And then union, the domain of this interval, 0 to 1. And then union, 1 to infinity. These examples are a little bit different than what we've covered in before. Um, but the exact same thing, you guys will see really kind of the difference. You can see there's no radicals here, right? So that's good. We're looking good on rad no radicals. Um, however, we can see that we still have an expression in the denominator. And we still want to figure out what values then are not going to make our denominator equal to 0. So in this example, we're still following the same thing. We're still following restriction number 2. We know we can't have values. So we're just going to set this, again, equal to Cannot equal 0. Now, the important thing about this, though, notice this expression. This expression is separated by multiplication. And we know when we have a product equal to 0, we can apply the, does anybody remember? 0 product property. The 0, are you typing that in your notes? That's good. So the 0 product property. Remember, the 0 product property says if you're multiplying two of these and, one, and it equals 0, then one of them has to equal 0. So therefore, we're going to set them both equal to 0 to go ahead and solve. So in this case, we have x cannot equal 2, and x cannot equal negative 7. All right, And the reason why this works is if, let's say x was 2, then that would be 0. The rest of the, the denominator is 0. If x is negative 7, that's 0. The rest of the denominator is 0. Right? So the function is defined for two values now. Before, it was just one value. Now it's undefined for two values. So what we want to do is still kind of do the same thing. If you guys were going to think about a number line. Now, again, I don't want to get too much into this. These are actually going to be asymptotes. But for right now, you guys just know them as undefined values. OK? So for undefined values on a number line, we're just going to use open circles. OK? Because again, we're just using the number lines. So everything else is good, though, right? Would you guys agree? Everything else is defined except for negative 7 and 2. So we have everything going that way, everything in between there, and everything going that way. So what I'm going to do is just basically write the domain for each little kind of interval. So for the first interval, we have 
the smallest value is negative infinity to negative 7. Both of those are undefined though, right? Infinity is always undefined and negative 7 is undefined. Then we have the center interval. The center interval is just negative 7 to 2. Right? Do you guys agree that's the next kind of interval? And then the last one is from 2 to, how far does it go? Infinity. You can immediately say, hey, trinomial, I need to rewrite this as a product. So x squared plus 19 all over, let's see, this is going to be x minus 6 times x plus 1. Now that I've rewritten it as a product, we know that the only constraints here are whatever make my denominator equal to 0. So I have x minus 6 times x plus 1 cannot equal 0. And I can just apply the 0 product property. Therefore, x cannot equal positive 6, and x cannot equal negative 1. Now I just go to a number line. And I say negative 1, 6. Let's say here's 0. Open circle, open circle, right? Because those are two discontinuities. And the graph, though, is going to keep everything in there. So we'd have negative infinity to negative 1, union, negative 1 to 6, union, 6 to infinity. Okay.